What I got for you guys today is a review of this cool little toy, the Boost Surfing Fin. And I use the word toy very loosely because this is a pretty expensive piece of kit depending on what you're gonna use it for. I came across this on, I believe, Instagram and it's been promoted to me in my feed occasionally, but it's an electric surfboard surfing fin that as the name suggests, it gives you a boost. This review is gonna be broken down into two aspects. One, they market this for surfing, and two, for uh, paddle boarding and maybe other things you could power with this. So essentially what it comes with is the fin itself, this little grill back here for protection, you can remove that uh, and it'll give you a little more power, but I left it on just because, uh, just for safety. It comes with this hex key screwdriver and it's also got a magnet in the back, which I'll talk about here in a minute. The controller that goes on your wrist. Uh, it also comes with a wristband that I wasn't super fond of and I changed it out. And by default, it comes with like a Bane box slot type of adapter that fits to mount the fin. This is, comes with it. And I had them also send me a Futures one because I use Futures for most of my surfboards. And they have FCS uh, style mounts as well. And of course, it comes with a charger. The TLDR of this is, should you get this? Well, it depends, like anything. I should mention that this was provided to me to review I normally don't take a lot of products to review, but in this case, it does fit with what I like to do. And I saw this come up on my feed before. And when they reached out, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. Considering what this costs, which I guess I should mention right now, around $700 Canadian, I think the exact price I will put here, plus shipping. And also I got dinged with duty for this. It is very innovative. I will definitely say that having uh, a electric probably brushless motor with a propeller on it that will power a paddleboard or a surfboard is really neat considering it's all enclosed and you can control it. I suspect how this is built is on the inside. Uh, it has like the electronic speed controller from like, I'll say it's kind of like, uh, like maybe from RC equipment, especially when you turn it on, which I'll show you right now using the magic screwdriver as some people call it that you use the magnet to turn it on because it's completely sealed and enclosed. That sounds like an ESC for like a quadcopter or, you know, RC speed controllers. And I'll just shut it off. So for me, I mounted it on this board right here, this egg shaped board that I built many, many years ago, which you can find on my channel because uh, I wanted to mount it with the USA style box with the Bane box. It mounted fine. The only thing I would say is it, this is a very weighty fin because it has the battery and all the electronics and the motor in this fin. And the fin I believe is probably made out of plastic maybe? It bends a bit. I'm not sure quite, it's probably like maybe ABS. I'm not really sure what it's made of. I think it's plastic. Anyways, it's heavy. To mount that with a Futures fin box or FCS, which I've read some reviews, other people have mentioned that this on an FCS box would just not great. It would probably tear out or it has torn out. Even though I glassed my boards really strong, I didn't want to risk pulling out a fin box. For my testing, I went with the uh, Bane box. And same with my SUP uses a Bane box. So surfing, how was it? Well, I took it out on a very cold day. First thing I'll mention is the battery life on this is supposed to be like, depending on how you use it in the settings, up to like two hours maybe. I got about a half an hour because the water temperature, well, it's like around one degree Celsius. Uh, so around 34 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Yeah, probably not the best test, but when they sent this, I told Boost that I'm gonna be testing this in cold water and it, you know, the battery life's probably not gonna be the best and it's not. Now I will get out and play around with it eventually when the water warms up in months. I took it out for a surf. I would never take this out into a lineup. Number one, probably, People are probably wouldn't appreciate that you have like the electric powered surfboard. And two, uh, this is weighty and it does throw off your board a bit, I found. It mounts really easily. You just install this slotted piece into the board and then this mounts onto the fin. And that holds it on. And then you use um, the screwdriver to drive some screws in through 
the side of the fin to mount it. And that's how it works for the future style as well. I took it out in marginal conditions just to see if I could catch some kind of rolly, mushy waves and no one else was out. And I was able to catch a few, but I found that this froze off kind of the weight of the board. Now, even though this is only a seven foot long board, it still was able to push the board, but I think you really need a larger board to take full advantage of this because I don't think I would ever use this on a smaller board, even a groveler or anything like that, because number one, it will totally throw the weight off. Number two, if you can already surf, you probably shouldn't be using this. I wouldn't recommend it. It's too, it messes you up. I think it's, it's just, it's bulky. Because it was so cold, my GoPro died. And unfortunately, some of the better waves I caught near the end of my session when I got used to using this, it didn't feel good. I didn't like it personally. It's too heavy. It just throws off the weight of the board. As they market this for people who have maybe mobility issues, uh, have, or maybe you're just learning, I think if you stay in the whitewash or very gentle rolling waves with like a foamy or a longer board, I think this would be fun to use. So I personally wouldn't be using this out in the lineup at all. It's novel, it's innovative, it's all one piece self-enclosed and it does give you a bit of a push. It certainly helped me when I was paddling out through the whitewash, but I also found it kind of threw me off because I was fidgeting with the controller and I had big gloves on as well and hitting the button and you can set it up so that you can have like a, like an actual boost to get you into the waves where I think it goes like from, I forget what the percentages are, but from like low power to like high power to really get you going. Or you can put it into a mode where the motor stays on and you can set the time how long it stays on for like 15 minutes. And you can control all that on the app, which this does connect to an app so you can control some of the, change some around some of the settings, which is kind of neat, depending if you're using it for uh, surfing or if you're gonna use it for like paddle boarding. This watch strap, as I mentioned earlier, I changed it out to a Velcro one because the one that came with it, it didn't actually fit over my winter glove. It was terrible. So I switched it out for a Velcro watch strap. So to turn it on, as I mentioned, you use the magic screwdriver with the magnet, turns it on, and then the controller, all you do is you just hit it and this one will give you the boost. So that was the full cycle to get you into a wave. And then the kind of what I'll call maybe trolling mode or like um, cruising mode. Where it just stays on for a given amount of time that's set up in the app. So for surfing, I personally wouldn't use it myself. And if you're learning, I would, mm, I don't know. I would say take a lesson, maybe get someone to push you into a wave. And I know they provided this to me for free to review, but I'm just telling it the way it is. So on to would I use this for paddle boarding? And I would say, yeah, maybe. So I took this out again in a cold day, but it was a pretty nice day. I didn't even bother wearing a dry suit or a wet suit. It was just at a pretty smooth, calm lake for the most part. It was like a 20, 25 kilometer an hour wind. Having this on a paddle board, I would say, yeah, I think I would be okay to have this on a paddle board, even though it does create a bit of drag. Using it to go upwind and getting around is pretty good. Now, my wife who was doing some filming, she was like, oh, it doesn't go very fast. So she was expecting to see like this motor on it. She was expecting it to like get up to planing speed or something, but it doesn't do that. Yeah, not terribly. What this is good for is assisting you in going up wind or just cruising around at a leisurely uh, couple kilometers an hour. I think this would be great if you maybe did like fishing off your sup and you wanted to use it to get around. It would be really handy getting from one point to another point uh, and you didn't want to spend all your energy paddling. I personally, when I go paddling, I go for exercise. Using this for getting back up wind would probably be very helpful. Like if you're tired or you just need that little extra oomph to get you going. Now, if you're touring around, I could see this being probably useful too, um, just to help conserve some of your energy. 
But what I don't like is because it's an enclosed unit, and I know due to engineering you know, limitations, they have to enclose it, it's probably to keep it all waterproof and for simplicity, you're limited in the range, right? Because you have to charge it directly. Uh, and also charging, it takes about two, two and a half hours to fully charge it, which isn't terrible, which is actually, yeah, pretty good. But it's no good if you're out and you need to charge it or if you run out of juice. You can't swap out the pack. You can't add energy to it. There's no way to do that. And I understand that's an engineering limitation, as I mentioned. It would be cool if you could. And this is a completely sealed unit, which I don't think the battery is... Ex like you can't change it, you can't do a battery swap in it. So when this, and they're lithium ion cells, eventually those will die. Like, are you left with a really expensive paperweight? Maybe someone could take this apart. Maybe iFixit could take this apart and maybe swap the batteries in it. Or no, maybe they'll have a battery exchange program. Just think of your phone battery, a lithium ion battery or lithium cell battery. You're talking maybe three to five years being generous. You're gonna lose range the battery is changeable in the watch itself. It's a 12 volt battery, it says of some sort. So anyways, but the battery is changeable in this. Like this is a really innovative product and I hate to be critical of it. A lot of the reviews I've seen online, um, people are really stoked with it. And I can see why it's cool, it's fun. But if you already know how to surf and you just wanna play around, great. I don't think people would appreciate seeing this out in the lineup. So let's summarize this. I would not use this on any of my shorter boards, especially since, again, the attachment point is so small and uh, I don't wanna risk breaking my board. And definitely the FCS ones probably don't do it. I think this is really great for supping, paddle boarding. Maybe if you have a kayak, you can somehow modify to, to maybe give it a, some extra juice or some oomph. You could probably use it to do something like that. Even if I were so inclined to put this on my one of my smaller boards to try out, the weight of this will totally throw off your surfing. I'm not the best surfer in the world, but I can surf well enough to know that this is just going to throw, the weight of it is going to throw you off, especially on a smaller, lighter board or a shorter board. It just throws off the center of, I don't know if you call it the center of gravity, but the, the balance point when you're on the board. But for paddle boarding, I think it could be fun. I think it could be very useful given the limitations of the battery in the situation around not being able to change the cells. So that's kind of my hot take on the Boost Surfing Fin. I appreciate them sending it to me for review. I'm just spelling it all out there. I hope I was fair giving the pros and the cons of this fin. I think it's, again, very innovative and credit is due for the engineering that went into this. And I do hope that they can find a way to swap the batteries in this for longevity because this will eventually become a paperweight once the batteries die. Well, I hope you found this review helpful and I will see you guys in another video. And I'll tack on some raw footage here at the end of me just messing around with the, the fin so you can kind of see how it works.